There is a problem in self-discovery and it's kind of like the famous hen and egg problem. Who came first? The egg or the chicken? <laughs> and it's exactly the same in self-discovery, self-awareness or whatever you would call it. Is it by discovering who I am that I become what I want to be or by discovering what I want that I become who I am? Regardless of your age or stage in life, the journey through self-discovery is never completely over. Day-to-day -day priorities are important, certainly, but a life that's nothing more than a series of going through the same actions usually doesn't provide much enjoyment. Research suggests that when we see ourselves clearly, we simply are better human beings. We make sounder decisions, build stronger relationships, we're less likely to lie, cheat, and steal. We even are better workers who get more promotions. Self-awareness is the ultimate turning point. You don't believe me? Ask him. Skynet has become self-aware. Many people overestimate their level of self-awareness when in reality only a small fraction of the population is truly self-aware. Studies found out that about 85% of people believe they are self-aware, but only 10 to 15% truly are. Although it can take years or decades to gain a solid understanding of yourself, there's a lot of talk about finding the real you in order to live an authentic life and have a better understanding of what you want. How this actually works, however, is often unclear. What does it mean to find the real you? And does that version of oneself even exist? After taking a break from making videos, I decided to start a new YouTube channel. So I fired up my computer and came up with a whole list of ideas to talk about. But after a couple of weeks of writing and trying, I realized that I was totally wasting my time. I was following other people's examples or shamelessly copying them. And that's definitely not how I want to make videos. When I realized that my search was getting me nowhere, I had to ask myself one simple question. Why I have nothing to say? And to find an inspiration, I turned to the one and only, the one that could have all the answers, my past. From my initial search, it became apparent that to answer my question, all I had to do was discover who I am, starting from who I have been. This is where I stumbled upon the age-old hen and egg problem. If I don't know who I am, what I like, and in general, where I fit into the world, how can I be more self-aware? How can I know me if I don't know me? Yeah, I'm even more confused than before. Maybe it's best to start from scratch. Today, we're going to be talking about self-awareness. What's self-awareness in the first place? Developing your self-awareness directly affects your chances of success. It's all about self-awareness and changing those behaviors. I've spent the last four years of my life studying people who look in mirrors. I wanted to know what self-awareness really is. According to the organizational psychologist Tasha Urich, there's two different categories of self-awareness. The internal self-awareness represents how clearly we see our own values, passions, aspirations, reactions and impact on others. The external self-awareness means understanding how other people view us. To improve external self-awareness, Urich suggests finding a loving critic. Find someone who both wants you to be successful and will tell you the truth without any sugarcoating. Don't try to ask all your friends for feedback. That can be overwhelming. Take one friend or partner and let them know what you're looking for. To drive the conversation, Yurik suggests asking simple questions that help you understand how your behavior and who you are is perceived by others. Building internal self-awareness might sound easier, but it requires an equally deliberate approach. Yurish cautions against writing lengthy journal entries that focus on your troubles or trying to search deeply for hidden meaning in your thoughts and actions. As she says that such exercises can make you more depressed and yeah, that's what I'm going to try. So I came across this exercise on self-visualization as I found out that Without a clear idea of the things that matter to me or the person I hope to become, I'll continue living for other people instead of myself. By the way, there's a real question. I did not invent it, I promise. What do I want from life? Uh, where do I see myself in, ten, in five years or 10 years? What makes me proud of myself? Uh, what I am really scared of, dragons? What is life asking of me? When all is said and done, what will I have said more than I've done? I guess she's right. Instead of trying to go deep, Yurik suggests go wide. Make a list of jobs you've had and what you enjoyed most about them. Look for themes and patterns in the types of work you find fulfilling. Self-discovery work can't be finished in a day, and in fact, it generally lasts a lifetime. Want to know something fun? She even says that one of the most surprising findings is that people who introspect are actually less self-aware. The problem with introspection isn't that it is categorically ineffective, it's that most people are doing it wrong. 
To understand this, let's look at arguably the most common introspective question, why? We ask this when trying to understand our emotions or our behavior or our attitudes. Why is an ineffective self-awareness question because we simply do not have access to many of the unconscious thoughts, feelings and motives we're searching for. Another negative consequence of asking why is that it invites unproductive negative thoughts. So if why isn't the right introspective question, is there a better one? What if instead of continually asking why, we started asking what? So to answer my initial question, why I have nothing to say. I want to try and change the question. What can I do to find it out? What do I feel when I say cert certain things and I like that feeling? And to go even wider, the Italian philosopher Giambattista Vico said something that I think fits perfectly. He said verum ipsum factum, meaning we only know what we do. To translate it in today's world, we can say that we learn by making concrete things before we feel ready, before we, ha we have the complete idea and before we know where it's going. It is when you begin to express your idea and turn your knowledge into action that your life begins to change. Taking a step towards the life you want is an act of courage. Most likely, the answer to the question, who am I, will evolve and expand throughout your life. Discovering who you are, what you need and where you want to go next often takes time but it can be a deeply rewarding process. Some people fear that becoming more self-aware means seeing the ugly truth about yourself. Well, it could be, but you know what? Live a meaningful life can be difficult, but it's okay to feel uncomfortable.